going on guys welcome back to another video hope all is well now in this video i want to talk about a few things so i might be a little long-winded but excuse me I want to talk about coach prime some more you know there's been some um talk out there i know a reporter said to him what about this long-term lifetime contract i wouldn't even sign a lifetime contract but i want to talk about that some more because there will be offers in the future, even though he's happy where he is now. He said that he do not want to coach in the NFL, and I understand that. But um, I want to go over that. And I also want to go over um, Shador Sanders. Is he still in the running for the Heisman Trophy? I think so. So we're going to talk about that as well. Also, the status of Alton McCaskill. I don't know the status of Alton McCaskill, but um, I want to cover that. And, um, Cromani McLean, will he get more playing time? I think so. He's being coached by Travis Hunter. So I think uh, we're going to see a lot more of Cormani McLean in this next game against Arizona State. So Terrell Owens, I brought up Terrell Owens here because he has some things to say about his dating life. And I know he's associated with the team. You, you see him on the sidelines quite a bit. So um, I have a good doctor that had a lot of things to say about Terrell Owens. So um, stay tuned. We're going to talk about it guys please do me a favor before we get into this video please give us a like comment share and subscribe also hit the bell notification so you can get updated on my latest content as it drops all of that will be greatly appreciated by me all right so coach prime there's been a lot of talk about coach prime and it's a good thing what they're saying about him um, the reporter said how about this lifetime contract i believe it was in this press conference right here what about the lifetime contract, Coach Prime? Would you consider signing a lifetime contract? And um, I like how he answered the question. I personally, at this stage of the game, he's a first-year coach. It's still early in the season. I wouldn't be talking lifetime contract. That's just me. Nice for them to say, you know, mention him uh, with a long-term deal. I think they may, at the end of this season, I could see them um, extending the amount of money that he's supposed to receive because he's worth it. One person said he's worth a hundred and plus million dollars. I think so as well. Look at what all he brings to the table. He brings um, the fanfare, the media, the social media, his son, Dion Jr. Uh, with his social media presence, everything is working. It's a complete package. The ticket sales are through the roof. Um, merch sales are through the roof. Everything is up right now. So I think they may ex uh, extend the amount of money, you know, the bottom line. But as far as a long-term lifetime deal, I just don't see him signing that because you don't know what the future might hold. You know, there will be someone that come along that will give him an offer that he can't refuse. Skip Bayless has talked about it. Keyshawn Johnson has talked about the Alabama job. They put, the things are just rumor mill, right? They put a lot of things out there. You know, I don't know if Coach Saban is going to retire in the near future. I don't know. I know he's 70 plus years old, I believe. I believe he's 70 or 70 plus years old. And um, at some point, he will consider retirement. And um, I could see them reaching out to Coach Prime and say, hey, look, why don't you come to this program? Just imagine Coach Prime at Alabama. He doesn't have to worry about getting five-star recruits. He's going to have access to all of that. And... Um, and also that school will benefit from everything that he brings to the table. I'm not saying that that's a possibility, but if Coach um, Saban say that he's uh, retiring, I'm, I'm looking at Coach Prime to fill those shoes. But I'm not saying that he's thinking that now because he seems pretty content where he is in Boulder. I mentioned in the last video about, I said the New York Jets, you know, I'm a New York Jets fan, you know, um, just imagine when because Shador they said that you know he may come back for his senior year I think so because Travis Hunter is a sophomore right and I could see him coming back again for his um senior campaign and um doing big things because they're going to be in a different conference right they're going to be in a different conference and they're going to have a lot of new looks new teams different things like that the team is going to get better they're going to have an opportunity to win the conference and everything else. So I see Shador coming back. But imagine after his senior year, he get drafted to, let's say, the Jets. Okay, the Jets come to Coach Prime and say, look, I'm just saying hypotheticals, right? Hey, Coach Prime, look, man, 
you know, we got we we drafted your son. He's the you're the only coach he knows. Why don't you come with us? We'll offer you, I don't know, ninety hundred million dollars. We got some money at our disposal, coach. What do you think? Because we can benefit from that whole social media thing that you're bringing, especially bring Dion Jr. as well. You know, bring Darius as well. Bring Uncle Neely. Bring all of them. You know, and I'm be I'll be for that, guys, because I'm a New York Jets fan. We haven't won anything in my whole life. Okay. We haven't won a Super Bowl since Joe Namath guaranteed it. That's what I wanted to say about Coach Prime. I know he is content where he is. He said in the past that he doesn't want to coach NFL players. He said he just don't want to do it. So I get that. But we don't know what the future holds, okay? Now, getting to Kermani McClain and Shador, I want to talk about them. Mainly, I want to talk about Shador first. Is Shador still in the running for the Heisman Trophy? I think so. And um, even though, you know, despite the sacks and things like that, he is, he has a, uh, his completion percentage is high. His quarterback rating is high. I think it's like number one in the country. Um, his passing yards are high. That's only going to get better, especially in this game with Arizona State. Look for him to um, increase those passes. I, I would say 400 yards. I don't know. And um, so, yes, I think Shador is in the running for the Heisman Trophy. McLean. I think Kermani McLean is going to see a lot more playing time in this game. He's going to see a lot more playing time. He is getting coached by Travis Hunter and uh, Travis Hunter. Shout out to Travis Hunter because they said he'll be back. Coach Prime said he'll prob probably be back um, during the bye week. And um, so look for him to come back, rest it up. And this team is going to make a run. And they're going to be bowl eligible. Trust me. I, they, I don't know which bowl they're going to play in. From what people are telling me, these bowl committees, they pick whoever they want to pick. So they could be in a major bowl. We'll see. But um, as far as Cormani, he's going to get a lot of playing time in this game. He's getting his feet wet. He's only a freshman. He's a true freshman, though. He has all the God-given abilities to uh, produce and um, be an integral part in the Colorado um, defense. So he's going to be out there. And um, shout out to Travis for helping him out. They're really working with him, and he's being featured in these well-off videos. So you're going to see a lot more from Carmani. My guy, Alton McCaskill. I don't know what's going on with Alton McCaskill. That's my only knock on the team. Not the team, not the players. That's my only knock on the coaches. What's going on with Alton McCaskill? Is he ready? Now, I can see if they come out and say, well, you know, it's a health situation. He's not 100% yet. We want him to be 100% before we put him on that field. We did put him on the field a little bit just to see how he would react. But um, we just moving him along slowly. And I, and I understand that because they have the burden. I mean, this guy is a NFL talented player, you know, in the, in the future. So they just they want to bring him along slowly. And I understand that. But I really want to see him out there because they're saying they're looking for a running game. And um, that's my other thing. What's up with Smoke? Cavarcier Smoke. I know Cavarcier Smoke is on special teams. He's doing well on special teams. One of those games, he had a really big tackle. A couple big tackles. I believe they're using him as a gunner. But what's up with Smoke? Um, yes, we do have Dylan Edwards. We do have Hankerson. He's doing well. And uh, we have Savion Wilkerson as well. But I want to see Smoke. You know, when he was at Kentucky, he was doing well. I'm like, why not here? Was there some nagging injuries or something like that going on? I don't know. Like, what, what's going on with Smoke, man? That's my only knock on the coaches. I support the team, but I do have my opinions now. I'm not afraid to voice my opinions. What is going on with Smoke? What's going on with McCaskill? I mean, come on. You know, I want to see them out there. I want to see McCaskill run for 150 yards. He could run for 150 yards, and that's going to protect Shador because now the defense is like, I don't know if they're going to run or pass. And I honestly think that will um, protect Shador. The, they, the coaches know that, but they know better than us. Um, they're very careful about leaking the inner workings of the team. Like we had well-off media reach the people media in a pregame show, but they only release just what they want you to see. They're not going to release the inner workings of the team or whatever's going on. I don't even know the depth chart from week to week. So that's a good thing. But um, that's all I wanted to say about the uh, running game. I want to get to um, Terrell Owens. Terrell Owens, 
he was on a podcast with Ocho Cinco, Chad Johnson. We call him Ocho Cinco. And uh, he was talking about his dating life early on and why he why he date white women. And for me, I don't see a knock on it. I know he was getting dragged on social media, but me, he's a grown ass man. If he wants to date whoever he wants to date, he can date the rainbow for all I care. You know, um, his dating preferences, that's his of his own. My dating preferences are mine of my own. You know, um, it, it doesn't matter. But he was talking to, <laughs> he was talking to Chad Johns. He said, sisters just didn't like him. To my black women, they just didn't like him. They didn't find him attractive. And like I said, this is just, he's telling his story through his own perspective and how he grew up and his experiences. And we know that oftentimes our experiences uh, shape how we are now. Now, but I do believe, okay, I had some experiences early on, but you have to work on yourself to get over that. You don't want that to too much affect your life in the present. You know what I mean? You learn from it and, you know, you get over it, whatever you got to get over, whether you need therapy, I don't know what you need, but, um, it's just the way it came off. He was like, um, he was, he was, I don't like when people generalize, but like I said, it's that those are his dating preferences. I mean, if he want to come out and say, guys, I just like dating white women. So be it, man. So be it. But he was getting dragged. He was getting dragged um, on social media, man. He was getting dragged. Out to him for even even talking about it. Some people just I wouldn't talk about it. I, my dating preferences is my business. If I want to date, whether you're white, brown, yellow, whatever you want to identify your color as, if if we got a bond, if we got a connection, you know, I don't care what you look like. You know, I, I'm in agreement with Terrell Owens though that you know you got to be easy on the eye i mean that's just what it is it, but that's in the beauty is in the eye of the beholder if i like you that's just all that matters but we got to have some type of connection we got to be able to have i'm a community i like communication and um if we able to communicate and vibe so be it man but i personally if i was him i wouldn't have said it man he's all he's he's connected to the team you know they're gonna find anything you know what i mean but you know, by Terrell Owens being connected to the team and being connected to Coach Prime, they're going to find anything they can to mess with these people in the media. They're going to find anything they can. If they can use him to get at Coach Prime or the team, they're going to do it. And for me, who he want to date is not a big deal for me, you know. But um, he was just talking about his own personal preferences. This guy here, uh, let me introduce you to this guy. This guy said that he is the most requested scholar on the planet. He is Dr. Umar Johnson. He is from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He said he is the most requested, okay, scholar ever, okay, in the black community. Um, maybe some of you that's listening to this, um, you don't even know who he is, but this is Dr. Umar Johnson. As you see, he was on the Breakfast Club. He's a very outspoken person. He calls himself, he coins himself as the Prince of Pan-Africanism. He, he's um, Dr. Papa. He is the notorious RBG, you know, red, black, green. And um, he said he's the prince. He said he's related to Frederick Douglass. I don't know. I don't know if he's related to Frederick Douglass, but that's what he said. He's been working on the school for eternity. The school is still not available, but this is Dr. Umar Johnson. And you see this look here. I, I picked this picture because that's how he was looking at Terrell Owens. But we're going to see exactly what um, the most requested scholar on the planet now i know you're thinking like i don't know who he is max how he's the most requested scholar that's what he says man but he talks about a few topics going on and he has some things to say about terror owens let's take a listen i respect both men i have a lot of admiration for i met terrell owens briefly on the sky train in atlanta at the airport en route to my terminal to take my flight to london england about 10 years ago we briefly shook hands and that was all there was to it. Okay. But the conversation centered around Terrell Owens saying that because of his color, maybe because of his looks, black women did not pay him a lot of, of attention growing up. All right. Let me stop there. He did say that. Now, we all got this when we were younger. Some women didn't like me for my skin color. You know, they didn't like me for this. They wanted me a little bit of darker. It don't matter. Right. Everybody gets this, but that is not a reflection on all the women in the community. It's just not. But oftentimes 
our experiences growing up, it, we, we got some things we haven't worked on. We haven't, um, we have some, what do you call it? Uh, not generational curses, but we have some things like we, we kids are crazy. We all make, get made fun of, right? But these are things that you have to work on internally so it won't mess with you as an adult. So it won't affect you as an adult. Um, but again, Terrell Owens is talking about his own experiences, but it doesn't reflect all women in the community. It really doesn't. Um, there's black women all over the world. If you don't like black women in the United States, go to Brazil. Yeah, Brazil. Yeah, go to Brazil or South Africa. We'll go, over, we'll go wherever you want to go. But um, that's just me. That's just me. Like if I got dissed at when I was younger, that doesn't, I'm an adult now. I don't work past that shit. You know what I mean? So that's just my thing. Go ahead, Umar. I'm not sure when this stopped, whether it stopped when he became a high school athlete. I don't know if it stopped when he became a collegiate athlete. I don't know if it stopped when he became an NFL superstar. Now, Terrell Owens isn't the only black celebrity who uses this excuse. Hmm. And I love Terrell Owens. I'm a, I'm a fan of Terrell Owens, He's so there's no issue okay. there. But I'm tired of black celebrities and black men in general when it comes to the snow bunny crisis. When it comes to the snow bunny crisis. When it comes to the snow bunny crisis. All right, just to let you guys know, he likes to repeat things three times. He does. He, he often repeats things um, in triplicates. That's just what he does. He just wants you to, I guess, get it in, ingrained in your head. That's why he repeats himself. But he said the snow bunny crisis, he's referring to white women. He said it's a crisis because he said a lot of brothers are dating the snow bunnies. Okay. I'm just getting you up to speed on who this guy is. I'm tired of Terrell Owens. Mm, he's tired. I don't know if Chad Ochocinco used that. I believe Childish Gambino expressed similar sentiments. Childish Gambino? And I hope I'm not misrepresenting any of those brothers. I didn't hear about Chad Ochocinco. That's what you're telling me now. I, I don't know about Chad saying this. But Terrell Owens has said this. Childish Gambino has said this. Tons of other black men, be they professional, celebrity, or just everyday hardworking black men, mm. Many black men have argued the reason that they are bunny hopping. Bunny hopping. Many black men have argued the reason that they are bunny hopping. I don't know if Shannon Sharp would be included in that. Shannon. I don't know if Shannon said that he didn't get attention from black women younger in life. Or is not. Shannon, why are he bringing Shannon in this? This is um, with um, Terrell Owens here. I, I don't know. I haven't heard about Shannon. Is Shannon bunny hopping, y'all? I don't know. That's what you guys are posting now. But no matter who said it, no matter who said it, no matter when they said it, no matter where they said it, I want any black man who wants to use the excuse mm. that the reason you're dating black white women now, the reason you are bunny hopping, the reason you are bunny hopping in your 40s Ooh. is because you got rejected by black girls in your teenage years. That doesn't make any sense to me. That doesn't make any sense to me. Say it one more time. That doesn't make any sense to me. So you're bunny hopping with white women in your 40s <laughs> because you got turned down from sisters in your 20s. That doesn't make any, any sense to me at all. That doesn't make any sense to me at all. So you're telling me that you're suffering from post-traumatic rejection disorder. That's what you're telling me. Never heard of that. Terrell Owens, you suffer from post-traumatic rejection disorder that's what you're telling me that's what you post-traumatic rejection disorder that's the first time i've heard that so he said that's what that's what you're telling me Terrell. telling me so since the black girls didn't like you in elementary school you bunny hopping with white women in your 40s since black girls didn't like you in high school you bunny hopping with white girls in your 50s because black women rejected you in college. You're now bunny hopping with white women in your 30s, 40s and 50s. That's an excuse. Black men, that's an excuse. He said it's Stop an excuse. Stop using black women as an excuse for your bunny hopping. Stop using black women as an excuse. Listen, I'm, I'm more inclined to go with the good doctor here. He might be using that as an excuse. 
but i don't know how the conversation came up though like why they start talking about that and why did they share that you know listen your preference who you want to date that's your business you know you don't have to make excuses for it that's what you like you know uh, him and chad i didn't hear the whole conversation on how it how they got to this on their dating preferences um i don't know but i just thought like me personally i don't it's nobody's business what my dating preferences are and i don't have to explain myself in my 40s i don't not in my 40s i don't explain myself to anybody in my 40s i just don't everybody that know me um i'm unapologetic of who i am that's just pretty much what it is there's no need for me to explain anything i like what i like and that's just what it is okay i don't i don't believe in peer pressure no more not in my age not in not in my 40s i don't believe in it but you know like i said they will use anything just that one little thing he said uh to get at coach prime and um for me date who you want to date man if you want to bunny hop like the good doctor say don't listen to the good doctor tarot uh tarot owens just go ahead and do what you gotta do you gotta go jack <laughs> for your bunny hop let's look at all the rejection we get from white folks let's draw a parallel here let's draw a psychological parallel look at all the rejection black people suffer at the hands of white people we get mistreated in white people's restaurants mm. but yet we still go back what? we get mistreated hold in up. white people's hold shop up, hold up hold up hold up if i go to your restaurant i promise you if i get mistreated i'm not going back i'm not going back man i will spend my money somewhere else or i cook my own food how about that because I, I, I like to cook come on doctor shopping centers and yet we still go back we get mistreated in white people's grocery stores and yet we still go back we get mistreated at white people's universities and yet what did this guy do with tarot owens see how he going into a different direction let me forward this let's see what he's doing as an excuse for why you're bunny hopping in your 30s 40s and 50s get your ass up out of here with that Get your ass up out of here with that. And I'm not directing this to Terrell Owens. Yes, you percent. are. Yes, you are. It's funny. I'm talking about Terrell Owens and I got on Eagles green right now. It's funny. I'm talking about Terrell Owens and I got on Eagles green right now. It's wait, wait, wait. He talking about Terrell Owens and he got on Eagles green right now. Let me see. Where is that picture of Terrell? There you go. That's Eagles green, man. I don't think that's quite Eagles green, but I think the throwback jersey is that color with the color of his Nordica. That's a nice Nordica shirt. But um, yeah, it might be Eagles green, uh, a variation of the Eagles green. Funny, I'm talking about Terrell Owens and I got on Eagles green right now, but this is not about Terrell Owens. This is not about Terrell Owens. It is. This is about all black men and any black men from Alabama to Australia, from London to Louisiana, London, from Canada to Turks and Caicos, Turks. from Brooklyn to Botswana, Bots from Johannesburg to New Jersey. OK, any black man in the African diaspora, any black man on the planet Earth. Mm who is bunny hopping. I don't care if you're brown bunny hopping, white bunny hopping, <laughs> yellow bunny hopping, or red bunny hopping. If you are bunny hopping. Yo, I'm not right for sharing this. I'm just not. <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> oh my God. He said, I don't care if you went from Brooklyn to Botswana. You know what I mean? I, I don't know, man. Tarot, man, what you should that that's a com tarot really that's a conversation you have in private, man. It really is. It ain't nobody business who you date. You just like who you like, Tarot. That's just all it is. You are showing the world that you have no faith in yourself. Mm. You have no love for your race. You have no love for your race. Now look, I'm done with Umar. He said it wasn't about he what it wasn't about Terrell Owens, but he's making it about Terrell Owens. But it wasn't about Terrell Owens. Like my final thoughts on this is um Terrell Owens, um date who you want to date. There was a um 
situation here, this guy here, he has a HBCU shirt on. And it's a play on words, you know, Coach Prime coaching the HBCU, and now he's at CU. I didn't make a big deal of the shirt, but some people are making a big deal of the shirt saying, I, this is crazy how he do this. And, you know, why would he do something like this? I mean, it's just a play on words. It's, for me, it's not a big deal. You know, he's just saying that Coach Prime came from the HBCU and he's at CU now. HBCU, you get it? But, yeah, some people just make a big deal out of anything these days. Um, they said that's just the most uh, recent egregious example of appropriation as comedian and radio host Ricky Smiley, Alabama State graduate, suggested that Colorado has earned a HBCU status and Fox Sports commentator RJ Young posted an embarrassingly ridiculous TikTok of a Buffalo statue on campus um, donning sunglasses. A chain and a do rag that says we coming. You know, people are really sensitive, man. Be Smiley said here, um, am I right about Ed Deion Sanders' impact on the Colorado Buffaloes? And he just put uh, some laughing emojis. Hey, man, you know, people just make a big deal out of um, anything. And for me, I I can see I can see why the HBCU people are, are feeling a little slighted by this shirt. But for me, I got bigger fish to fry, man. I'm not worried about the shirt. Um, I see what he was doing with this shirt here. I see it. He incorporated the CU logo and put HB in front of it. HBCU, you get it? It's not a big deal, man. But in closing, man, where the team is headed, I really do. I like what the, where the team is going and things like that. Um, I heard someone say Shador. I'm really surprised. I heard this. Um, I think I heard it recently. I'm really surprised that Shador is doing really well. Well, you just didn't do your research. He's a great quarterback. They just need to keep him upright, though. That's what they need to do. But he was a, he's a great quarterback, man. That is what it is. You, it ain't no surprise that Travis Hunter is doing well. There's no surprise that Cameron Silman Craig is doing well. You know, if Rock was playing, he would be doing well. But we have to wait for Rock next year. Um, Tyler Brown, that's who I'm talking about. Um, football is football, don't matter where you go. But, um, yeah, I like the team. And uh, Arizona State, here we come. Drop your comments below. I'm out. Peace. Thanks for watching, guys. But before you go, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also hit the bell notification so you can get updated on my latest content as it drops. If you have any video ideas, feel free to leave a comment below. Take care.